Okay. Take it. Take it. Hi, sports fans. This is John Doe and the band X. And we have a big winner right here. So first time Joey ever won anything. Okay, okay. Keep it down, guys. Keep it down. Joey, introduce yourself. I'm Joey. <laughs> this is Joey. And he won a, a guitar that he didn't like, so he traded it in for this really great guitar. It's a Fender Jaguar. No, music, music, music Master. It's sort of a duosonic Music Master thing. It's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> and, and Joey, you will go down in history in, in Springfield and Eugene, Oregon, right here in 1993 with X, winning a beautiful guitar. Xine, take it. I want to thank Tim from the Guitar Castle for giving away the guitar. Oh, yes, Tim. And also, Bohemia he's got good guitars and Bohemia After Dark, which is what we're on, and for the for for detuning you. Is that right? Oh, Tony. Tony. And I'd like to thank the, my alien parents for leaving me here on Earth. I'm enjoying myself very much. Okay. Is that cool. is that anything else you want to know from us? Any more information you need? Oh, hello. No, I'm Tony. Thank you. It's Tony Gilkison. And I just want to say one more thing. Rock and roll, motherfucker! All right. Can you just give like a brief rundown of like... Brief rundown of... Do you want to do this next time? Um, brief rundown of X's punk rock band kicked ass from 78 to 93. And uh, did a lot of stuff. There was a time in this country when there was like cultural and revolutionary and political upheaval going on, and people who were poets or musicians or, or singers or songwriters or artists or painters were doing it because that's what they were. It was an incredible moment in the late 70s and early 80s when uh, people found each other because of their beliefs and because of, of trying to overthrow like the status quo and, and resist brainwashing. And it's hard for people to even conceive of that nowadays because they've totally embraced the commercial and the consumption and the brainwashing so much. Um, so I think it's really great that we're that we're playing again, and a lot of people are talking about that that era of music. Um, we're opening some shows for Pearl Jam, and Iggy Pop is opening some shows. And I guess there was a mention of Rolling Stone. Someone told me because I don't read that magazine, but that. Um, that congratulations to Pearl Jam or some kind of thick words to that effect for letting these people open for you because it's just it's I don't know it's like it's like bringing something to their audience that they wouldn't know about otherwise because punk rock isn't political anymore there's like no, Green well, Day they're you know they're millionaire 19 year olds and they're singing about fun but you nothing know what? is yeah and I think that the thing about whether people are rich or poor has to be right. validated though because that's a form of prejudice you know, if somebody makes money as an artist, sometimes it's not even their fault, it's a fluke. I know a lot of people who've made a lot of money in the arts who haven't changed and are really good people, so I, I don't go with that part of yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I think punk rock will always be political because it's a subculture. And now it's a, it's a giant subculture. And bands like, I don't know, Less Than Jake or Zeke or something like that, they'll be touring around the country and there's, you know, like, 1,200 people oh, yeah. there to see it. And it's all word of mouth. It's not because they get radio airplay or because they're sponsored by Nike. I mean, Vans has done a good job with, with exposing a lot of people because of that war tour. tour. And that's cool. I mean, it's, it may not have the direct political corporate monster to fight against, which they should maybe. But uh, I think anytime you separate yourself from the status quo, from the masses, then you're political, just by, you walk down the street with a mohawk, and people aren't gonna give you shit. Right. And that's a beautiful thing about having a mohawk, even if it's been done to death, right? Right. Actually, not anymore, though, because it's been all co-opted by the advertising agencies, which is the only culture America has oh, left, which is that advertising is our culture, 100%. And so mohawks and purple hair and, and piercings and tattoos are more than acceptable. They're almost like a regulation that you have to have that to work at a coffee house or and you know it's on it's on TV 24 hours a day all that kind of stuff it's not it's not scary or weird the thing is it may still it may still make some people think oh I'd never do that but it doesn't frighten people the way we used to frighten people when we got out of the van or the way Black Flag or Circle Jerks or the big boys from Austin Texas or any of those people used to really be scary you know a lot of these bands were trying to come back you know and Circle Jerks tried and 
you know, Greg and Keith still couldn't, you know, still fighting, and yeah. a lot of these bands are trying to come back and, and, and make it, and it's just really hard. I mean, the industry is still the same. They're, right now, they're still looking for the next Nirvana still, and they're, the A&R people are scrambling. And, they're I mean, not even looking I'm, for the next Nirvana. Yeah. They're looking for the next supermodel. You know, they don't, they're past Nirvana. Oh, you mean like an ex Kate Bush kind of thing? Not like even Kate Bush, that and Natalie and Brulia. Yeah, well, I think that that's where it all started. It was like, well, Columbia had the Kate Bush thing, and okay, now we got to have the Tori Amos thing, now we got to have the yeah. whatever her name is. I think it's the worst time for women in music ever, even though more women are doing it and getting more exposure, and there's the Lilith Festival and all that. But if a band like L7 doesn't have a record deal, then I say we should declare war. Well, actually, uh, Kate, me and my friend Beth were going to try to, we, we were we were going to call it the Bitch Fest, but we didn't think it would get promoted that well. But to have, like, female artists that weren't, like, granted the Lilith. How about the, how about the whore fair? <laughs> the, the, you know, something like that. And getting something like that together to help expose these bands. Or maybe you could spell it like Horde and just make it Horde. <laughs> the horror tour. And so horror. just try to be able to get some of those female artists that aren't being exposed, like that. Red Ants or, you know, whatever. Yeah. These, these bands aren't going to ever get well, on. women are always going to have a disadvantage, and that's just it's just a given. And it's, it's really, it's too bad, it's just the way it is, but, you know, I think that when you work at a disadvantage or some disability on any level, whether it's, you know, artistic, you know, a bad political climate, you're gonna have better art. Like the art coming out of Russia now or Czechoslovakia now is, is shit compared to what was coming out during the communist era because they had this thing to fight against. It's gonna always be that way. We've got it now. It's just got, you know, I guess if musicians try to incorporate it into their music, great, but we've never been in, I mean, like politically speaking right now and say like Microsoft or everybody, all the stuff going on, you would think that there would be a lot to like write songs about and do things Well, well they're, they're very smart, though, because in the 60s and the 70s, the, the people that didn't want to go along with stuff had, you know, they were totally disenfranchised. And now they're totally welcomed. So if you have purple hair, you can work at Microsoft or Nike, oh, yeah. and you can make $50,000 a year. And it doesn't matter. It's like, so it's it's kind of like they, they, they kind of defanged the left they in, have. in the underground by making it acceptable to be that way. I struck my first deal on the Fox Network affiliate here locally with purple hair, but I had to pay them two thousand dollars. We've had to pay the right to, to show bands like you and everybody else because they still don't think this music has any entertainment value like what we're doing yet. You know, sound scan shows different, but the guys at the TV stations are still wearing their sounds belt pants, listening to their eight tracks that came with the Rosemobiles oh, wow. ten years ago. And so it's hard to get it out, and it's you know, and it's hard. Is MTV cutting you guys some slack? And well, we don't. Some... We don't even need to go talking about that, do we? Okay. Well, well, actually, you know, you know I had a had video some... uh, with one of the Stone Fox, something to brag about, that we made for five hundred dollars. We played it to death. Was all over the country. That's won so many awards mm -hmm. and like gay film festivals and stuff. And it was on MTV. It was on M2. It was in heavy rotation on M2. And that was just a total fluke. And I don't know why in the world that happened. Because people were so much. Like me, I've been in the music video business for 15 years. It was like I was seeing tapes and thrown them to the right, and I'm just like, you know, give me something that's not the same thing all over again. And once we got that in, and it, it you know, the budgetary things, that didn't matter to us. It was the content. And that's what people are really after. They're, they're not after these million dollar dancing videos, they're after seeing the, their artists perform. It doesn't really matter. Like, the money isn't the option as far as how much you spend. It is on MTV, though. It doesn't, and that's an unfortunate, but yeah. fortunately enough, there's 200 shows around the country who don't care, and will play. Well, see, I think MTV is a visual medium. It just simply is, and that's what's created this now really important look thing, which is like you have to be a beautiful, beautiful person to be in a band, which is too bad. I always thought it was the opposite. I always thought that being a singer or allowed you to look odd and not be into sports and Right. You know, be be into sort of sitting in your room and figuring out stuff. And if you know, I mean, Dionne Warwick and George Jones. George Jones. They're they're attractive, but they're not beautiful. Well, look at if it would have gone back to like Steve Vaders and the Ramones and everything like yeah, that. They, nobody but, was but pretty. But, well, that's a whole different subculture. Right. Uh, you know, they weren't top of the pops. They weren't no. top forty. But, you know, let's take Steve Perry. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I hated that band, but nonetheless, Steve Perry, I guess he could sing. What about and, Joe uh, Walsh? What about the Eagles? <laughs> Where were they? Now they're all weird. Come on, let's think of some other weirdos. They were all kind of geeky people, right? Yeah. Right. That's a good thing. Elvis Presley. Oh. Well, I don't find him attractive, but then what do I know about the man? <laughs> so, uh, what that I know about? there's, I think you're very attractive. <laughs> I know, what it would, never mind. So, I don't know there, you guys have been around for so long, I've seen so many of your shows, but what do you think was like, and this is like the total cliche question, but what was like the most intriguing experience you've ever had on the road to where, when you're 90 and you're, Rocker I'm not gonna be on, on your front so porch. I'm not answer that question. Oh, okay. Well, when you're old enough, I mean, what are you gonna look back on? I don't think you can. You know what? I think I think when you live long enough, you realize that it's it may be all one big complex thing that's all interconnected, and you can't really take pieces out. Of it. You know, besides that, I don't remember anything. So. I would say there, if if you're lucky, uh, there is one night out of each tour or one moment out of each night where you truly transcend standing there singing and playing and, and you are having some sort of outer body experience where it's just flowing through you. And those are the, the moments of selflessness and clarity. When you're uh, one. That, that make me come back. So is this the start of your tour or the end? How many dates have you played? Well, we're not touring. Okay. We did, we did two shows in San Francisco and a show in LA and a show in Seattle and a show here. Then we go to Chicago and New York and Washington and Boston and play a bunch of shows from Pearl Jam. We play some shows in like Orange County in LA, south of LA, the Hoot Nanny Festival. We're and playing we're on, just we're doing. Playing on Mars. <laughs> we're just doing the shows that are offered to us that we can do that are feasible to get to the place and afford to make everybody get there and come home for a hundred dollars or whatever more if we're lucky. Um, and then um, if more shows get offered to us, we'll keep doing them. But it's kind of like we're just playing on the weekends. It's really so where's fun. Tim? Where's Tim? Here's X and where's Tim? Tim's with the wallflowers. Tim will be here with the wallflowers. <laughs> I was expecting to see Tim. Tim has, has been working with the Wallflowers for like two years. Oh wow! He'll be here with Pearl Jam and the Wallflowers. You can see that that beautiful. No, I met Tim from the Guitar Castle. Oh, Tim is on, I just saw him. Did you? I was gonna say. I just saw him come in with Tim. I, I haven't seen Tim, so it's not the reality. Tim and Tina are on their way in. Okay. I thought you were talking about a different Tim. No, Tim from Guitar Castle, because I knew that was probably the first person I saw. All right, let's do some IDs and three you have for your sound okay. check. Right. Um, Bohemia After Dark, um, you know, we have all of your videos, so if you could like announce some of them, great. If you can just do blanket, hi, John I can see from X, and you're watching Bohemia After Dark, here comes a whole bunch of our videos, brace yourself, we'll no, do a special. Maybe, uh, maybe we should do them separately, because it's, it's always hard to... Uh, I'm so terrible at this. I have my ass in <laughs> Say that. Hi. I'm Maxine. I'm a band called X. And you're watching Bohemia After Dark, and here's some of our videos. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. That was dripping, Bravo. Was dripping with sex appeal, let's see. Sexy. Nice. Yeah. See? Hell it's like yeah. it's it's like see I think the, the whole mistake yeah. that, that the uh, that the video makers do. Anything you guys have on video tape we have. Unless it's somebody who taped it and took it and gave it to you. Throughout the years, yeah. we've got everything. Sure. So, X special, John Doe, you're got watching it. it all. Got it. Yo soy Juan Massa de la banda X. Esto es uh, Bohemia en la noche. Bienvenido. Los videos de X.